companies everywhere are finding ways to be savvy philanthropists and even in a few rare cases stepping up their giving. Let's turn to the members of the panel for a view from the trenches as well as a lot of good insight about how to do corporate philanthropy in a way that's meaningful to both communities and to companies. The public cares about um, whether or not a company is a good corporate citizen or not, whether or not the company does or not, the, the public does. And they impute good and bad to, to every uh, company that they come into contact with. I think this new environment actually creates some opportunity as well. Often said that, you know, crisis is a terrible thing to waste. It kind of forces you kind of out of your comfort zone to consider things that maybe you wouldn't consider. And to the extent you can move your companies from that kind of the, so the siloed approach to more of an embedded approach, I think you'll have more impact, but you'll also have more sustainability because once those things are built in, they tend to be kind of, you know, kind of you know, ongoing. So it's really not a debate each year about, you know, how much can we afford to give given our current circumstances. It's kind of pre-wired. Uh, and, and therefore has more, more sustainability. I do believe that business is only really useful uh, if it can make others successful and can improve uh, the world and, and the community. And there is no separation between the company and the philanthropic pursuit that is the altruistic company. It has to be a company that has, this is an inter integrated point. We now, I think, have an opportunity today to look for in this time it's not, you know, not the crisis and the global economic collapse and all this, but this is also an opportunity to create new models, new opportunities. What are the new models that are available today? And our partners are coming to us. I do think that right now is the time for experimentation and creativity because ultimately that will lead to greater levels of success in kind of these altruistic models that, you know, Charlie's has uh, engaged us to explore the next couple of days. This environment, figuring out some way to dedicate some resources within your group to try to influence the entire company to rethink ways to leverage you know, the, the core business, I think would be useful. So how do you identify the best way to, to, to do the integration that Steve and Mark talked about so that it benefits you as a corporation and also brings great business well, I mean, it, this sounds obvious, but it, if you look around at what companies are doing, it, it, it is not so obvious. It's, the first is it should have something to do with what you do uh, for a living. It's, uh, so if you can get a direct link to your products and services, uh, then it works to reinforce the role that you play in society because it's, it's sort of what you do to earn a profit, but you also take that and, and use it to do some social thing. This is the seminal point for those of you who are in companies or working with CEOs or working with leaders who are trying to do something. I think this is where you have to get to and only you can figure this out, which is what level of authenticity can your company have in this category? Because if it's not authentic, if it's not really who you are, it is not going to work in the long term. That people always overestimate, they always overestimate what you can do in a year in this area, but they underestimate what you can do in a decade. And if you can't pursue this category and this theme and this concept and this, cap this capability on an authentic level for more than a decade, you're not going to have the impact for your company that you're looking for.